Jai Gurudev, Jai Masters. The spiritual path is neither hard nor easy. It depends on what you understand and how sincere you are. So if you think the spiritual path is about God, you're lost already, because by definition you don't know God. The path is supposed to lead you there, but you're not there. So it's like you haven't been, you never been to New York, you don't know New York, so you made up a concept of New York, and you're running around looking for New York and Florida, or trying to find a path to New York and Florida. You can't do that. That's not the way it works. The foundation of the spiritual path is self-knowledge. You understand where you're starting. You always have to start from where you are. Now, people get lost in that, thinking, oh, I need to honor where I am. I don't want to grow too fast. It's No, it's not about being who you are right now. It's about understanding where you're caught. Understanding. It's like if you are on a ship and it's anchored, don't waste your time setting, you know, bringing the sails up or starting the motor. You're not going to go anywhere. I don't care how well you know where you want to go, how well you know the path. You're anchored. You need to put your energy into removing the anchor. Then you can worry about how to go somewhere. It's just the same on the spiritual path. You are anchored. I always discuss the anchor. That's why. You're not going to come here and somebody do all this rosy talking about the kingdom of heaven, <laughs> right? Because you're not going to get there by thinking about it because you don't even know what it is. It's you understand why you're caught where you're caught. That's all you need to know. If you know why you're caught where you're caught and you work on getting uncaught, we can worry about the next step next. But while you're caught, there is no purpose in all this high thinking and all this stuff. All right? You need to cut the anchor. The other example I use all the time is you're in a hot air balloon. You're in the basket of a hot air balloon, and you want to go up. That's why you're in the hot air balloon. And you keep putting hot air in. You keep yelling at the captain who's driving the thing. Come on, let's go. Let's go. The problem is it's tethered. That's the, I didn't make up that word. It's tethered, all right? You have to untether it, all right? So basically, it has these ropes that tie it to the ground. I don't care what you do to that balloon. That thing's not going up. I don't care how much you complain. I don't care what books you read. I don't care how well you understand the dynamics of hot air and how it goes up. I don't care. You're not going anywhere. Now, if you work on untethering it, it's going to go up by itself. And when it starts to go up, now you're ready for more teachings. Now you're ready for understanding, all right, how do you steer this thing? How much hot air should it have in it? Is it? Should it go too fast? Does it burn out? You understand that. But there's no reason to understand. I don't care how well you understand that. You can say it in Sanskrit or Latin or Aramaic. It doesn't interest me because it's of no use to you while you're tethered. The only thing that's of use to you is getting untethered. If you stay tethered, you're not going anywhere. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter what you understand. It doesn't matter what you read. Read from 800 different religious high beings who talked about how high the high is and all the other planes and all the shakti and all the different blue lights and blue pearls and all they go on. Read about it. You ain't going anywhere while you're tethered. That balloon is not going up. So the question becomes, what is tethering you and how do you get untethered? That's the real spiritual path. If you read Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, it starts with yamas and niyamas and pranayamas. It starts with this low-level work <laughs> of getting untethered. And so does every true path. But nobody wants to do that. They just want to do the high stuff. They want to go to have some experience, okay? And then you had an experience, and then you say, I'm spiritual. No, you had a spiritual experience that does not make you spiritual. In fact, if you're telling people about the spiritual experience you had by definition, you're not spiritual. You were once, because the word had is the past tense, which is why I don't encourage people to talk about their spiritual experiences, because when they talk about them, they say, I had it. Last year, I went to this meditation retreat, or I did this, or I did that, right? I had this unbelievable experience, saw these like, what about now? You seen it now? No. Is it okay if we talk to you this way? Are you going to come out here? We're going to have a real talk about spiritual growth. So what is tethering you? What is tethering you? You know you're tethered. You spend every moment of your life trying to be okay. Every moment, 
your relationships, your finances, what you look like, your insurance to make sure that it goes wrong. You do everything you can every moment of your life to try to be okay. If you want to understand why you're tethered, instead of spending every moment trying to be okay, you take at least a moment to ask, why am I not? That's a very different question. Why am I not okay? Because you know darn well you're doing everything you can. Find the right relationship. Find the right thing. Should you have another kid? Well, should you go on a vacation? Or should you go back to school right away? Or should, what should be your major? What, what kind of house should you buy? And what should you wear? All of it's about I'm not okay. What will make me be okay? We just all have different things. But that's what's going on. All right? That's your tether. You're tied down to not being okay and then trying to have people, places, and things around you be a certain way so that when they come into you, you feel better and not when they come into you, you feel worse. All right. That's where you're caught. As long as you're doing that, I, I, I know it's hard to hear because your whole society teaches you, do it. <laughs> Just be better at it than the next guy. Some people do it with no holes barred. You see it a lot nowadays, don't you? No holes barred. Whatever it is I think would be good for me, it's happening. I don't care who I step on. I don't care what happens. I don't care what it is. No holes barred. Some people have morals or you know concepts and, and, and belief structures, and so they have some holes barred. just makes it harder, by the way. All right? But they have holes barred. You know you're not allowed to do that. You can try to get what you want, but not that way. But you're still doing the same thing. You're still saying, I need it to be a certain way for me to be okay. And I'm caught doing that. That's why I, I, I like the word caught. Like the anchor catches you. The tethers of the hot air balloon catch you. You're caught, aren't you? Right? You do it every day. You go from one relation to the next, from one situation to the next, one thing to the next. It's just you're constantly caught in this act of trying to be okay. Spirituality starts when you wake up. And what do wake up mean? You wake up and realize, you know, I've been doing that my whole life. My whole life. It was the toy I wanted. It was the Barbie I wanted. It was the can I wanted. You know, it was every single thing, right? Whatever it was. In high school, I wanted to be popular. And then when I got to college, I was a bit of a loner. And people would leave me alone. In other words, I always have had a way I think would make me be okay. And I always struggle to make it be that way. Well, guess what? You've been doing it your whole life. And if you're still doing it, waking up means, oh, maybe it doesn't work. (laughs) <laughs> if I have been doing something my whole life and I'm still doing it, eh, I think there's something wrong here. Like if the anchor is holding you down, but you're up on the mast trimming the sails, maybe we need to look somewhere else. <laughs> right? Maybe that methodology doesn't work. Maybe the act of not being okay and then trying to make people, places, and things be the way you need them to be, argue with them, defend yourself, you know, buy their way, look pretty. I don't care what you do. Just manipulate so that things are the way you want. Maybe that whole method doesn't work. Not maybe there's a different way to do it. Maybe if I change my clothes or I go goth. Or it's not about changing your personality. It's not about changing your clothes. It's not about changing your philosophy. That's what everybody tries to do. Well, maybe this way will work. Maybe this way will work. And you wake up and you realize it's not the methodology I'm using. It's not the particular philosophy I'm following. It is I'm not okay. And instead of asking why I'm not okay, I'm trying to compensate for what for the fact that I'm not okay. That's what doesn't work. If I never get anything else across to you, I don't care how much I have to talk about it. See the difference? That's a paradigm shift. The paradigm shift is when you ask why. It has nothing to do with the outside world. Your not okayness is an inner state of being, isn't it? Your discomfort's inside. You're not going to solve it outside. All you're going to do is put a band-aid over it. And it's not even easy to do that, is it? It's not easy to find the right person to have them behave exactly the way you want all the time whenever you need them to be a certain way. It's not easy to find the right job that always turns you on and they always give you the job that you want to have and your boss stays the one. It's not easy to manipulate the world to make it be the way you want. It's not only not easy, it's impossible. If you work your butt off to get one of those things the way you want, there's 7,000 others that are going to happen in the next moment. (laughs) It keeps changing. Nothing stays anywhere. And so you wake up. That's the awakening I want. Not some deep meditation, which are good things. I'm not talking against it. I'm just saying the real growth is you get rid of where you're caught. And then let's worry about getting higher. 
right? So what's holding you down? What's holding me down is I'm not okay. If I was okay, I wouldn't have to do all those things. If I was okay, I could be in a relationship or not be in a relationship. If it was okay, I could have money or not have money. It doesn't matter either way. It's not a matter of not having money. It's not a matter of having money. Why do you want to have money? So I can buy things that make me be okay. What if you are okay? Right? I'm talking real. The Buddhists say work at the root. The root is I'm not okay. If I was okay, the world would look beautiful. I told you, if I was okay, the world would look beautiful. Why would it look beautiful? Because it's here. And everywhere else, it's not. There's nothing everywhere else in the whole universe. And here there's this beautiful little ball with all kinds of stuff going on, including, including crazy people. It's exciting as could be. Hey, you all play video games, right? You, you just see the video games you all play. All kinds of stuff goes on. God gave you a real one. The video games, you think it's neat, right? <laughs> you know, Grand Theft Auto. When someone steals your car, you don't think it's so much fun? I mean, come on. It's just amazing. So the net result is a person who's okay doesn't need things to be a certain way. Now, no, I'm going to say right from the down. Don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean you don't work to raise everything. A person who's okay is the one who can raise things. Let's just, I usually wait that for the end. Let's get this straight. If you're okay and you don't need anything to be a certain way to be okay because you are okay, you're filled with love, you're filled with joy, you're filled with inspiration, you're filled with passion for every single thing you do, you're a-okay. You got that straight? Okay. You can help others. Why? Because you don't need to take from them. You don't need them to be a certain way for you to be okay. You can be Mother Teresa and go out and serve the lepers. She was okay, so she was fine being with lepers. The Dalai Lama's okay, right? They took his home and killed all his monks and did all this, and they asked him about it, and any time he talks about it, he laughs first. I watched him, and and they asked him, why are you laughing? Because in my tradition, we're taught not to take things too seriously. Even those things, any things. That's what it's like when you're okay. It's shocking, isn't it? So when you are okay, you're able to go out and help people. You can help because everything is unfolding in front of you. You don't need it to be a certain way. And you can see if there's a way to raise it. High beings raise the energy wherever they are. They don't raise it their way. They just look and see there's natural ways. The child fell down, pick it up. Oh, but I might get sued. No, that doesn't happen to somebody who's okay. Right? The child has fallen down. I'm going to help it up and I'll deal with the next situation. I'm not going to not pick the child up because my mind is telling my mind it's sued. So I'm able to help. I'm able to serve. So don't think that this methodology I'm talking about, the spiritual path, is not about helping. It is about helping. But it's just not about helping you. So you wake up and you realize the only real paradigm shift, and that's what it's about. The spiritual path is a paradigm shift is to sit there and say, it is not about getting things to be the way I need them to be so that I feel okay. It is not about making sure things are not the way that I don't need them to be so that they don't bother me. You've already devoted your life to that. It's a paradigm shift from that. What do you mean? It's renunciation. I'm supposed to just be unhappy and put up with terrible things. No, of course not. I would never, ever teach you that, right? Right? It's about realizing that that way doesn't work. Why keep doing a way that doesn't work if it doesn't work? You're still doing it. Everybody's doing it. Everyone in the world is doing that. They're still doing it. Rich people are doing it. Poor people are doing it. Old people are doing it. Young people are doing it. Right or wrong. Sick people are doing it. Healthy people are doing it. It's the one thing that everyone's doing, and that's why the world's a mess. Because it doesn't work. And what it means for, for me to get it the way I want it, you can't have it the way you want it. That's when the yin and yang comes in because you don't want it the way I want it, right? So we are at odds with each other. Whether we're enemies or just friendly competitors, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. There will never be peace while everybody's out there thinking what it's about is getting it the way I need it to be for me to be okay and making sure it's not the way I need it not to be so I'm not okay because everybody wants it different. Can you understand that? Do you see why that causes a tremendous amount of friction? It does in your life, doesn't it? (laughs) With your relationships and with everything. All right. So now let's talk about the paradigm shift. The paradigm shift is when you stop saying, what do I want and how can I get it? And what do I not want? How do I avoid it? And you sit there and say, what's wrong with me? It is about trying to find out why I'm not okay and taking care of that. So there's the first shocking thing. You mean there's a way to take care of why I'm not okay? not just compensate for it temporarily. 
There is a way to take care of why you're not okay. There is a way to be okay. Now, what does it mean to be okay in there? Now you feel a little fear and insecurity, self-consciousness and need. and all. You feel a lot of stuff in there, don't you? All right? No, not once you're okay. Once you're okay, and I'm not exaggerating. You listen to me. This is not an analogy, right? When you're, when you're okay, there's this energy. What energy? The exact same energy that's creating self-consciousness and insecurity and jealousy and need and want and, and desires and all this, a lot of stuff going on in there. That energy channels and starts going up instead of out and down and you start feeling these waves of joy just your heart gets lifted up you feel all this energy come out the top of your head all the time it pours out your hands you just feel you are a being of energy all right you're a being of energy it's just what you're doing with it you have lots of energy in there do you understand that even when you're depressed you're a being of energy what do you mean you are using all of your energy to keep down all this energy that's trying to come up that's negative because you suppressed it all in there that, so you've just wasted every bit of energy you have but you're a being of energy nobody's not a being of energy it is a question of what you're doing with it alright and I've already told you I'm not going to go back I told you what you're doing with it you suppressed it here let's get it Why am I so messed up? You suppressed every single thing that ever bothered you. Every person that ever bothered you, everything that ever bothered you, a weather that bothered you, a scratch in the car that bothered you, a person who said something that you didn't like that bothered you, anything that ever bothered you that caused you to feel uncomfortable, you didn't want to experience. So you pushed it away. So in essence, you stored it inside of you. That's what Freud meant by suppression or repression. I'm just going to call it resistance. Because you think if I just push it away a little bit, I don't want to think about this, right? Where do you think it went? It would have come up and you'd be thinking about it, wouldn't it? Otherwise, you wouldn't have to resist it. But you kind of push it away, all right? And sometimes you push it away much harder. And sometimes you push it so far away, you go into, I love psychology, they have this word called denial. What does denial mean? I pushed it away so far that I'm making believe it never happened. I told part of myself, this never happened. Whoa, that's just beautiful. It did happen, and it is inside of you. Otherwise, you wouldn't have to deny it. So you took everything that ever bothered you, and you stored it inside of you. And now you wonder why you're not doing okay. That's a good starting place. Do you understand that? If you make a storehouse of garbage, you're going to smell like garbage. And you did make a storehouse, right? And so you push it down there. And then it tries to come back up. You push it back down. Then you try to figure out how to make the world be a way that doesn't hit your stuff. It's just another way of looking at what I've talked about all night. And you're now so screwed up, you don't stand a chance. Except you do stand a chance if you take the paradigm shift. Which is say, okay, I cannot make up for this mess that's in here. (laughs) It's just too messy. I can't have a relationship with somebody and one day tell them, how come you don't pay enough attention to me? You used to dote over me, now you're not. And the next day tell them, hey, look, not so close. And so you wake up and you realize this is my mess. It has nothing to do with anybody else. It is nobody else's responsibility. Nobody else can fix what's going on inside of me. They didn't suppress all the stuff down here. I did. I mean, if I can't work this through, they can't make it happen. All they can do is distract me from myself. Do you understand that? That's all your relationship can do. That's all you want them to do. And let me entertain you. Distract me from myself. Tell me you love me so that I don't have to hang out with a part of me that doesn't think I'm worthy of love. Take me on vacations. Buy things for me. Do different things that distract me. Create a life outside that distracts me from the mess I created inside. Do you understand that? All right? As opposed to the real relationship, which we'll get to in a moment. So now your first relationship is the one with yourself. That's the most important relationship you'll ever have. So you look inside, I made a mess. Remember I asked the question, the paradigm shift was to ask the question, why am I not okay? If you store, that's why that's the foundation. If you store everything that ever bothered you inside of you, you are not going to be okay. It's just very, I, I used to use the example that if you're driving down the road and you smell skunk, hey, stop, stop for a moment, stop, there's skunk. Oh, it's putrid. Get a test tube. Put it in there, bring it home, open it up. Why? I don't want to forget how bad it smelled. <laughs> and do that with every single bad smell that you have in your entire life. How are you going to be doing in that house? They're going to stink. That's what's happening inside of you. Do you understand that? If you keep the things that bothered you inside of you, you will be bothered. Okay? That's your starting position. The past. 
That's what's down there. Then that's what determines your likes and dislikes. If something that happened was nice in the past and you kept it, then you like things like that. It reminds you of things like that. Understand that? You went on on vacation with your parents to Hawaii and it was really beautiful. It was wonderful, right? And now every time you see the island, you hear the word or somebody talks about a luau or anything like that, your heart opens up. Come on. Not to mention, you're in big trouble. Don't meet a Hawaiian guy, right? It's like, oh, my God, he's from Hawaii. <laughs> like, he's, he's a mass murderer. Come on. You don't even know a thing about him, but he's from Hawaii. It's like, you think I'm exaggerating? I'm not exaggerating at all, all right? And so basically, you realize the things that you stored that you liked, that you kept down, they're all powered up. Things remind you of it, and then you like things, even though they have nothing to do with it. It sounds so silly, but it's true. And then things you stored down there that bothered you, anything that happens that reminds you of it, then you're bothered by it. You're bothered by things that are none of your business. Wow. You understand that? They have nothing to do with it. But because it left an impression from before, it now comes back up because it associates with it. Do you understand that? Have you seen that? So basically, the tiniest thing in the world bothers you all the time. All right, And because you have this stuff stored, then you develop this system in your mind of how things need to be so that I won't be bothered. I don't want to be around people talk about that subject, right? I, my parents got divorced. I wasn't comfortable with it, right? So now I like to be around people whose parents got divorced. I don't want to be around people talk about how nice their childhood was. It bothers me a lot. Whoa, man, that's how you can pick your friends, isn't it? By what happened to you when you were six, don't doubt what I'm saying. Are you looking at me? I wonder if you do understand this is what's going on. Your likes and dislikes are not yours. They're the reflection of the things you stored inside from your past. Man is the sum of his learned experiences. That's what Skinner said. You're not. You're the consciousness. But your mind, your psyche is the sum of your learned experiences. And so now you're running around with all this junk inside of you. And instead of fixing it, how? Let that stuff go. That's the fix. If you're storing inside of you that mommy and daddy got divorced, now you don't want to get married because you don't want to do it to your children. You don't have any children. That's the, uh, that's the purpose. You hear me? There are people who literally do that. I'm not going to have children. Why? Because I might get divorced. and I'm not going to put them through what I went through. I hope that doesn't sound romantic to you. <laughs> you're letting the most negative experience that happened to you in your life 30 years ago run your life. So the answer is simple. Doing it, I told you, spiritual path can be very hard or very simple. The answer is simple. If the problem of why you're not okay is because you stored everything that was not okay in your entire life inside of you, that's what's going on, and it keeps coming up and bothering you, and the answer is not to try to develop a world around you that doesn't hit your stuff or only hit your nice stuff, okay? It's to get rid of that stuff so that you can walk into life every day open, clear, empty, filled with enthusiasm, ready to give and live. Whoa, wouldn't that be nice, all right? That's what it feels like to be high. You just wake up in the morning and you giggle. I'm back, okay? And then you go through the day and you meet people and things happen and people say things that bother you and that's fun too. And every single thing is fun. It's a sport, Life's a sport. When you play sports, you don't want to win every single time. It's not fun, right? If the other team tricks you and does something that's needed, oh, wow, you will learn from that. You're playing a sport. It's okay if things go wrong. It's okay if things go right. It's not a problem. It's only a problem if you need them to be a certain way. If I need her to like me and not like somebody else, I'm in trouble. I'm going to be worried all the time about what she's doing and where she is and what's happening. If I'm fine, but she's my friend, right? She can be my friend, whatever she does, because I don't need anything from her. Doesn't mean I'm not a friend. I'm a real friend. I don't have to own her. I don't have to make her be a certain way. I'm actually willing to be her friend, not trying to make her be my friend. Like, I'm willing to let her be who she is. Surprise, I never thought she'd do that. Well, that's kind of neat, right? How about being like that? When you're okay, you imagine not having that burden. It's called liberation. It's <laughs> even mukta. You're a liberated being. You don't have the weight of your own being going on inside of you. How do I do that? It's obvious by now. If the problem is that you stored that stuff inside of you, the solution is to get it out. And that's the spiritual path. And not so complicated right? Way less complicated than how do I need every single person to be every moment of my life so that I'm okay. If instead all I have to work on is myself, 
Well, that's much more reasonable, right? Because first of all, it's only me in here. There's no competition. And two, there's a limited amount. I know it doesn't seem like a limited amount, but compared to every moment having to control everything, <laughs> that's a pretty big task you took on there, right? Every moment. Here I just work on me. I just work on getting this stuff out. And if you work on getting this stuff out, then it's not in there. It's just like the tethers, remember? If you undo the tethers, those are the tethers. All right? The system, and I'm just going to say it once because it's not complicated, but I want to make sure you understand. You're fine. You're beyond your yam. You're so fine. All right? You're the highest thing I've walked the face of the earth. You're a great being. You are a great being. Not you were. You are a great being. But what you are doing with yourself is ridiculous. All right? So you wake up and you start doing the work of letting go of the garbage that you stored inside. Now, that normally falls under the category of techniques. Those of you who know me know I don't teach techniques. Why? Because everybody else does. You get a smorgasbord, you get indigestion. Do you understand that? Techniques are wonderful. I mean, of course, there needs to be a technique for getting rid of the tethers. In a moment, I'll tell you the real technique for getting rid of the tethers, which is the same about getting rid of your stuff. But what it boils down to, first, you have to understand. Remember, I said you have to understand where you're going. You have to understand where you are and where you want to go. So basically where you are is all this garbage inside that's making you so uncomfortable that you have to struggle with the world to try to be okay. All right? That's basically where you are. All right? Where do I want to be? Not there. (laughs) I'm not ready. I don't know where I want to go. I've never been there. But I don't want to be there. You understand that? Clear enough? All right. How do I cut the tethers? How do I get rid of it? Well, the problem is you have this stuff in here. The answer is to get the stuff out. How do you do that? My techniques, that, a technique that I will give you, have nothing to do. Meditation is wonderful. Mantra is wonderful. These are very important things to do. Let other people teach you those things. All right? They're wonderful. What I want to teach you is a little more interesting. That is, all day, what you're used to doing is trying to get your way. But sometimes it's weird. Like, if the weather is cold or hot or rainy, instead, of, you know you can't get your way, so somehow you compensate by complaining. It doesn't do a thing. <laughs> it's raining out. I wish it wasn't raining. Why does it have to rain on my birthday? This is ridiculous, right? I have to get out of the car. It's pouring rain. I'm going to get wet. Yes. Yes. But how is that helping anything? Right? All that's doing is creating negativity inside yourself about the rain, about something that waters the plants and makes the trees grow and grows your food. <laughs> and all you can figure to do is to make negativity about the rain and about the cold and about people and about everything. How about, instead of trying to get rid of the foundational stuff that you've kept in there since your childhood and whatever, that's hard to get rid of, that's bigger stuff, we just stop. My first step of my technique is stop putting more in. Because if you cannot put more in today, right, over time you'll learn how to let go of what you already put in. But if you can't handle today, you don't stand a chance of having to select stuff that you purposely put aside as I can't handle it being and learn to handle it. Do you understand that? So what you do is like playing the scales instead of trying to play Beethoven when you start the piano. All right? You do the following. You walk out there in the morning and you understand things are going to hit your stuff. Somebody left the top off the toothpaste. Somebody didn't flush the toilet. Right? The kid's going to spill the milk. You know, something's going to happen. It always something happens, doesn't it? All right? Those are pretty little things. Like, I mean, they take two seconds to clean up. It's not the big deal. You can live right or wrong. It's not earth shattering. It's not like when your parents got divorced. It's not like the car accident you got in. It's not these big things that you stored in there, negative stuff, right? They're just what I call low hanging fruit. Little, simple, little, little things that you don't have to be bothered by. Do you understand that? And the way I really teach it to you is those things are not bothering you. They are not bothering you. Burning the toast a little bit, it not bother, it doesn't bother you. You bother yourself about it. You're in there bothering yourself about the fact that it's raining. The rain is not bothering you, it's just raining. The cold is not bothering you, you're bothering yourself about the cold. If you didn't wear the right jacket out or something like that, here, here, you went casual Friday and you didn't miss the fact the CO was showing up and you're supposed to wear a suit. Everyone else is wearing suits. Okay, well, there's no time to go home. Check. All right. It's not bothering me. They're my clothes. I am bothering myself about how stupid it was and how did I miss it. Do you see the difference? Okay. Now, I mean, if a car comes up and hits you, that bothers you. You don't have to bother yourself about it. 
it was definitely a bothersome experience. All right? But these little ones, if you don't bother yourself about them, they're not bothersome. Does everybody see the difference? Okay, that's, that's what I define a low-hanging fruit as. If you're not bothering yourself about it, there's nothing to do about it. There's nothing to do about the rain. There's nothing to do about the fact you ran out of egos this morning. There's nothing to do about the fact that, you no, know, this or that or the other thing. How about we take those things and make those our spiritual path? That's the spiritual path. What? Remember, it's all about getting that stuff out. Well, the first step is no put more in. Why bother getting it out if you put more in? There ain't nothing happening here. All right? So it is literally a major, major part of your spiritual path to be able to go through the day. All right? But how do I go through the day and not have things bother you? I didn't say that. I said you don't participate in being bothered. So if you're driving behind somebody, and really get down to it here. Ready? If you're driving behind somebody and they're driving slower than you want to go and you can't pass them, what if you can pass them? Pass them! I'm going to tell you it's not renunciation. It's not suffer. Suffer because it's good and spiritual. There's a name for that in Eastern tradition called tapasya. All right? Just, they're literally, those great saints used to make themselves suffer just to be able to handle it. Okay? Wonderful. It's good for saints. We're not saints. All right? You don't have to do that. I tell you, just handle the daily things that you have no choice. The choice is either make yourself a mess about them or use them to go to God. That's how I look at it. Right? There's nothing you can do about it anyways. You're not going to stop the rain. You're not going to get the driver in front of you doing something different. Do you understand that? So either you let it bother you or you bother yourself about it or you don't bother yourself about it. You actually start to work on yourself and start to learn how not to be bothered by things that don't have to bother you. Work on yourself. Now, what does that mean? First of all, do you see why I'm teaching you this? Does it make sense, right? Perfectly rational. If you're going to learn to let go of the stuff, don't put more in. As you learn to not put more in, you will develop the techniques of learning how to let the other ones go. As I do my scales, I understand they're boring. I understand that you still make mistakes. Just do the darn things. But why? Just shut up and do them. You'll find out later, right? If you develop the techniques of moving your fingers and understanding timing and different things like that, next thing you know, you're able to play something else. But if you don't develop that, you won't be able to. So if you don't learn to handle the simple things in life, you will never let go of the bigger ones that either happen or have happened in the past. So it's called a technique, all right? So here, you're driving behind somebody. They're driving slower than you want to go. There's something inside of you, your dear friend, who's making you miserable about it, okay? Are you mindful? That's the first step of what mindful means, right? Are you aware that this is one of the moments Mickey talked about? So you take it seriously. I don't play around with that stuff. You don't say it doesn't matter. It does matter, right? It's not about right and wrong. It's not about good and bad. It's not about going to heaven. It's not about being a sinner, right? It's about if I don't want this garbage inside of me, I better stop putting it in there, right? And don't tell me the driver in front of you is putting that stuff inside of you. They're just driving the car. (laughs) They're driving the car the way they want to, right? And you're making yourself a mess about it. The same thing with the weather. All of this is low-hanging fruit. Can you be conscious enough? Are you ready? I love that you come out here and listen to this stuff. But are you ready to be conscious enough, mindful, conscious, same thing, right, to notice that you're doing this and actually not do it because you noticed. If you're eating food and it makes you sick and you try to figure out why am I sick all the time and you find out because of that food you're eating, how many are going to keep eating it? So if you understand the reason you're not okay is because you stored all this garbage inside of you and then you catch yourself putting more in that isn't even happening. Somebody's just driving around the street and you're putting garbage inside yourself. I'm not going to drive down this road anymore. People drive so slow down this road. It's ridiculous. I get the lights all... You're ruining your life over nothing. Do you understand that? So if you want to understand why it's tethered... I hate to show you... You don't like it. You wish you could take a hacksaw or a blowtorch and get the thing out, but you can't. You need to work on a daily basis, moment to moment, and stop doing the thing you did that screwed you up your whole life, which is to store stuff that you don't like inside of you and make a whole big deal out of it and let it ruin your day. That driver in front of you could ruin your day. That's why people talk. They talk a mile a minute. They tell everybody how the person was driving in front of them. And then at night, they tell their spouse. And then they tell them, oh my God, what are you doing? What are you doing? You hear me? I'm sharing. You're not sharing. You're dumping. 
Do you understand that? Don't you dare call that sharing, all right? You're basically saying something happened to me today which didn't even happen to me. It just was in the car in front of me. <laughs> it's the weather. It's not happening to me. It's ridiculous, right? It's happening, and I noticed it, all right? And I made this big deal out of it, and I was unable to handle it. So now I have to talk about it, why it releases the energy. I was quoting someone the other day. I used to, back in the 70s, when I was really working on myself. I still do, but at a different level, right? I used to carry a little piece of paper inside my wallet, and it came from Gibran the Prophet, God, I remember it actually. And it was very simple. It said, you talk when you cease to be at peace with your thoughts. And when you can no longer dwell in the solitude of your heart, you live in your lips. And sound becomes a pastime, right? It's like you talk when you cease to be at peace with your thoughts. How's that for a one-liner? Have you noticed? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you sit there and you start working on yourself. I'm not talking about these extreme disciplines. I'm saying, what is the purpose of bothering yourself about something you can't do anything about, like the rain or the cold or the hot or the driver in front of you? Do you understand that? Or the fact that you went to a restaurant and the special wasn't exactly what you wanted it to be or the serving, the serving was too big or too small. What are you doing? Okay, so you work with yourself. How do you do it? Now we come down to real where the rubber hits the road, all right? Okay, so I've noticed that I'm driving behind this person and my mind is creating a big hissy fit about this, all right? What do I do? Well, I, I generally lately have been teaching you three, three methodologies you can work with, all right? One, and they're all fine. I don't want you to see them as one's good and one's bad, all right? One, it's a whole big area. It's called positive thinking. There's a whole thing called positive thinking. Many people teach it. You can learn about it, whatever. It's not, you don't need to learn a whole lot. Just say something nice. <laughs> you're driving by in the car, and the driver's going slower. Just sit there and say, you know, I could be my grandmother. And some crazy road rage person could be behind them. I want to show respect for this person. They like to drive slower. That's all. They're elderly. Whatever reason, the person is driving slow. That's the way they like to drive. I like to drive a little faster. They like to drive a little slower. What, am I God? No. They get to drive the way they want. That's positive thinking. Say something nice inside your head instead of saying something negative. Do you hear me? All right? You can say, well, all right, it's fine. I need to slow down anyways. It's like God's driving in front of me, telling me to smell the roses, pay attention, slow down, because I'm just going a mile a minute. Do something nice about the fact that you're in this situation instead of doing something negative. That's called positive thinking. Isn't that a funny word for it? You're welcome to do it. You have will. You could, you know, I'm not saying you have to suppress. Just when it says something negative, say something positive. Master taught that. Yogananda was an enlightened being. One of his techniques was every time your mind creates a negative thought, you create a positive one. You work on yourself. So that is one methodology of how to bring about the change of not keeping stuff stored inside of you. Now the next time you think about it, right, you think, well, wow, that was really beautiful. I got to, in the sense you're thinking, I got to, let that person in front of me have a nice day. I didn't beep at them. I didn't do, wow, you know, I didn't throw bad vibes at them. I'm a pretty nice guy, right? You get to have a nice thought about it instead of thinking negative about it. Can, can you see that, right? So that's one methodology, positive thinking. There's something that's deeper than that. It's, it's, it's stronger, okay? It's called, in, in, in its gen, these are general terms, and its general term is called mantra. Okay, doesn't have to be an Eastern mantra, doesn't have to be anything in particular, right? You pick something that you're comfortable with. And what do you do with that? You say it over and over again. When? When you're driving the car by yourself, before you go to bed, it's a really good time. When you first wake up in the morning, literally when you first wake up in the morning, instead of, oh my God, what am I going to do? You know, guru Om, Guru Om, Guru Om, whatever the heck it is, right? I used to, like, everybody says, you're supposed to say the name of God. Well, there's a lot of names and all the different traditions and so on. So I just started doing God, God, God. That was my mantra, <laughs> right? That way I got them covered. I got all the names covered. Allah, Buddha, everything. Like God, 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 right? So you just start saying something over and over. Your mind is very intelligent. You ever get a song stuck in your mind? You want the mantra stuck in your mind. I want it going on by itself. It just goes on. That's all. So now you're driving down the road. You know, it's not a forceful, willful act. You do it some. When there are moments, you try, you work with it. But your mind learns right away. It's very smart, right? And it gets into a habit pattern. 
But now that's a different habit pattern than the negativity. So now you're driving on the street, and there's a car in front of you driving slower, and you start seeing the negativity come up. But guess what else? The mantra's going on in the background. That's what the mantra's supposed to do. So it's to go on in the background by itself without you doing anything. Just God, 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 and then the front ground. Is, Why is he driving like that? And they think, God, God. All of a sudden, you have a choice. Whoa, I never had a choice before. Who do you want to hang out with? The poop or God? <laughs> okay? And you're just looking at it. If I hang out with the lower self, who's making all this negative noise, it feels terrible. If I just lean back into the mantra, I just think, fine. So we'll listen. Thank you. I'm glad you're driving slow. It's time to do mantra. Right? And just settle back. God, God, Guru, Guru, whatever the heck it is. Right? Master Yogananda used to do God, Christ, Guru. God, he covered all the bases. So whatever. I'm not giving you a mantra. I'm not even suggesting anything. Right? It can be love. It can be, you know, you know what a nice mantra is if you're not into the spiritual stuff? All right? I can handle this. That's a very nice mantra, all right? Go get yourself saying it all the time. Now down there saying, I can't handle this. I don't even, I can handle this. I can handle this. I can. It's going to need that you have a choice. You lean back into that. That's a whole other layer of technique, right? It's not just when the negative starts, you do a positive. It's like it's always going on in there and you lean back into it. Mantra is very powerful. I never really respected it as much as I do now when I'm trying to help other people. And you realize as a technique of working with your mind, forget the spiritual aspect, it's very powerful because you developed a layer of your mind that helps pull you out of the lower layer. And all you as the consciousness have to decide is which one do I hang out with? And you end up hanging out with that. And then the third methodology that I teach you, which is the only thing I do now, which is when something happens and it starts to hit your stuff, relax. What do you mean? It's just what I said. I know it sounds impossible. Somebody says something that bothers you. The person's driving that way. It starts raining. You have to get out of the car. And all the, the minute the energy starts to get weird. Anybody know what I mean by the energy starts to get weird in there? All right? The minute, you know, there's a disturbance in the force. Star Wars, all right? The minute there's a disturbance in the force. I mean the minute. The, don't even try to figure out why it's doing it. The moment it starts shifting, relax and lean away from it. It's shifting somewhere, as you can see it. Relax, you relax. It won't relax. People say to me, but it won't relax. No, I know his disturbance is not going to get undisturbed. Do you understand that? That's not the point. The point is not about making disturbance undisturbed, right? It's about you not participating in the non-disturbance, not pushing it away, not getting involved in it, just literally relaxing. Just relax and lean away from it. And you gave it the room to release. And believe it or not, That energy that you stored from before, the root energy that was making it be that way, has an opportunity to release if you keep your hands off. Just like a ripple in water, the best way to get it to stop rippling is leave it alone. Anything you do will make more ripples. Do you understand that? If you jump in the water, you try to level it off, just relax and lean back. Relax and lean back. And over time, miraculously, you will become a healthier, holier, happier human being because you didn't participate in putting this stuff inside of you and you gave it an opportunity to release. And then there's another fringe benefit. When you're leaning away from the stuff, you're actually leaning into something. You can't lean away without leaning into, can you? There's two sides of the coin, right? If I lean away from you, I'm leaning into that, (laughs) all right? As you lean back, you're actually leaning back into the seat of self, which I don't want to talk about. But now, now we're talking about getting untethered. That is the highest methodology of getting untethered. Can you handle it? Can you handle if somebody does something that disturbs you, that surprises you, right? And then you feel insulted and trust. And can you relax? Whoa. Can you relax and say, I don't want this running in my life? This is the ugliest part of my being the jealousy, the necessity, the judging. And just relax. We can deal with it later. If once I've relaxed and let go of me, if there needs to be something said or done, we can worry about it. But I'm not going to let that part of me determine whether something should be said or what should be said, (laughs) because I guarantee you'll be sorry later. Do you understand that? So literally, you start, this is the process of purification, is you relax and release. It's not easy. You hear me? We are used to doing everything we can to defend ourselves and get things our way. Now you're sitting here saying, I want to get rid of the part of me that was doing that. Christ called it being die to be reborn, dying to self. You're letting go of yourself, right? Those are the tethers. That's how you let go.
you know, end where I started. You understand that? That's what's holding you down. You actually, every minute of every day, you're letting go of yourself. Every minute of every day. Now, are you conscious enough to always be there and say, Ramadas used to say, use it to go to God. What? Everything. <laughs> In other words, if you're letting it go, you're going up. And all of a sudden, at some point, I always stop my talks at this point, you will start to feel an energy come in, not from in front, where you feel it now, where your heart opens and you feel this nice energy. Nope, sorry. It comes in from behind you. It comes in from behind where you sit. And you'll start feeling this energy pulling you back into it, spirit, pulling you up, shakti, chi, call it what you want. It's literally pulling you into it. And you feel it. It's just like you feel someone grab your arm. It's, it's not some mystical, be quiet and you'll feel it, all right? It's there all the time, pulling you back. And what you keep doing is letting go. You let go, and then you feel the anchor. The anchor keeps trying to pull you back. Let go. Let go. That's, I always end the analogy by saying you're going to realize, it's a great realization, that you're in the gondola. That's what they call the basket of the hot air balloon. And it's tethered. You're trying to figure out how to get it untethered. And you look, because at that end, it's cemented. I mean, there's stakes cemented down. But in the gondola, you're holding the ropes. They're not even attached. <laughs> They're not attached to the gondola. You're holding on to them saying, I want to go up. Let go. It's always about letting go. It's always about relaxing and releasing, relaxing and releasing. And all of a sudden, you won't be holding the ropes. And the thing starts to go up. That's a whole other journey. We can talk about that some other time. All right. That's the spiritual path. You see it? You start from where you are, right? But you let go. All right. Jai